Ingmar Bergman, one of the gods of the cinema. You know who this guy is? Directing over 40 feature films in his almost 60 year career, he left what many would consider to be an immeasurable impression on not only the film industry, but on filmmakers and film lovers around the world for years to come. My name is Luke Mick, and this is Exploring Bergman. So Ingmar Bergman's cinema has been looming over me every waking second of the day for almost six months now. And I oftentimes find myself looking back up at it thinking, damn, that thing sure is intimidating. So naturally my familiarity with Bergman and his work is sort of few and far between as I've only seen The Seventh Seal, Persona, and Hour of the Wolf and now, Smiles of a Summer Night. Now I really don't know what I want this video to be exactly, or this series to be, if it comes to that. I'm really just making this video off the cuff. I just felt like watching the first film in the Bergman box set, and then I felt like making a video on said film in said set. So that's really where we're at. I don't know what else to say. Now, Smiles of a Summer Night is a film that I would almost say I was hesitant to watch. With my best recollection of The Seventh Seal, I appreciated the darker themes explored in that film, but not so much the humor. I remember there being a lot of comedy in The Seventh Seal, and I remember not thinking a lot of it was very funny. Maybe my opinion would be a little bit different now. I was watching that film for a film class, a film and religion class actually, and I was keeping an eye out more for the religious themes of the film, and I felt like the comedy was detracting a bit from my my analysis of the religious themes of the film. You know, maybe I'd like The Seven Seal a lot more if I watched it now, I'm not sure. I'm assuming I would, but I digress. So knowing that Smiles of a Summer Night was meant to be primarily a comedy, I wasn't exactly thrilled about diving headfirst into the set with this film. In fact, the first time I ever put Smiles of a Summer Night into my Blu-ray player, this is what happened. Hmm, what should I watch tonight? I could watch one of the last films in the Tsukamoto box set, although I do want to savor those last few since I'm nearing the end. Or maybe Black Moon. This seems like a pretty eclectic and interesting film, although it does kind of strike me as a Criterion Marathon type film, so maybe I should hold off on this one and wait for a future date. Ah, you know, I could also dig into Ingmar Bergman's cinema. Let's see, what is the first film in this set? Smiles of a Summer Night. Sounds a little light, um, but I guess you have to start somewhere. I'm sure it's a good film. Uh, you know, why don't we try that out? Let's put in Smiles of a Summer Night and uh, see where that takes us. Uh, on second thought, I'm gonna watch Basket Case. What the hell is going on out there? Now you may be thinking, why not start with a different film? Because, I mean, heck, Smiles of a Summer Night isn't even Bergman's first film. It's not even nearly one of his first films. Well, the Criterion Collection has not ordered the films in this set in exact chronological order. It seems that they've ordered it more so thematically, or maybe in a way that's just more palatable to understanding the broader scope of Bergman's work and career. Regardless of how they ordered it, I think that they made a wonderful choice in starting with the film that they did. Now, Smiles of a Summer Night is centered around several characters. It's really sort of an ensemble, come to think of it. The lead character, though, is Frederick Egerman, a successful attorney who is away from work on summer holiday, and he is played by frequent Bergman collaborator Gunnar Bjornstrand. Now, Frederick is not old, but he's not exactly young either, and he's constantly reminded of this fact while in the presence of his young and beautiful new wife, Anne, and his son, Henrik, who is about the same age as Anne. They're both around 19 or 20 years old. Tension slowly begins to grow as Anne realizes that she has stronger romantic feelings for Henrik than she does for her husband, 
Frederick. Meanwhile, Frederick is drawn back to a former love, a woman much closer to him in age, a stage actress named Desiree Armfelt, played by another actor whom Bergman frequents, Ava Dahlbeck. Desiree enters the fold and never lets go. She intends to set things right and make up the minds of men men who clearly cannot do so themselves. She orchestrates a weekend retreat with the entire Egerman household, along with Count Carl Magnus Malcolm, a territorial and hypocritical man of the military with whom she's been having an affair with, and his wife, Countess Charlotte Malcolm, a very intelligent and resilient woman who is fed up with the open affairs that her husband has. That was a mouthful. There's a lot of plot, a lot of setup, and a lot of characters in this film, which is really just one of the most exhilarating, wonderful things about it. Now, I don't use this word often in speech, and I should use it more, but this film was delightful. I think the strongest asset of this film is Bergman's writing. It's super fast-paced and quippy, and it's always revealing something new about the characters. The complexity and depth given to these characters and their many love triangles was just so so engaging. It honestly feels like a very modern film. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody told me that this film was written in the last 10 years. It's also really, really funny. The situations that these characters get themselves into, especially Frederick, are just hilarious. And I should also mention that without the pitch-perfect performances from these actors, I don't think the humor would have worked the same. I very often found myself wishing that I didn't have to stare at the bottom of the screen reading subtitles just so I could focus more on the facial expressions of these actors. I mean, just looking at Jarl Kule alone, you can't help but laugh. It's also a very feminist film, which was a great surprise. Most of the women in Smiles of a Summer Night hold essential and pivotal roles in the film's plot. Everything is being calculated and decided by the characters of the opposite sex, while the men are out running around making complete fools of themselves. And a major theme that the film explores is the shame and the guilt that men should feel towards their infidelity and their poor treatment of women, and Bergman makes this theme very clear with characters like the Count, and even Frederick in a lot of ways. I also found Bergman's treatment of the character of Frederick to be really quite sweet. It is the perfect portrait of a man who's made a mistake in life, an error in judgment, and knows it. And the character of Frederick is so perfectly embodied by Gunnar Bjornstrand that you just can't help but feel for him. I guess I did expect such a celebrated filmmaker like Bergman to openly explore these types of themes and just sort of be more ahead of the times. That was an expectation. Obviously, he's still very loved and revered today. You know, I just have to say it was nice to see Things like that explored in a film that came out in 1955, a very old film in the history of film. The directing is also very solid. It's not as experimental or as awe-inspiring as it was in a film like Persona, but as far as comedies go, it's really well done. There are some pretty long takes here, and there's some great use of frame within a frame. Overall, it's a very attractive picture. The sets and costume design are also incredibly well done. I love in particular the Count's nightgown that Frederick borrows for the evening. Great stuff. My only real gripe with the film has to do with the final act. With about 25 minutes remaining in the film, it reaches a pretty climactic moment. And from that moment, I was expecting it to transition to the next climactic episode, as a certain piece of dialogue between characters insinuated that that's what was happening next. But instead, it drifts off and focuses on a different set of characters and wraps up their stories first. The structuring of events for me just felt a little bit bumpy and slowed down the pace just a tiny bit at the end, but I still really enjoyed every character's arc and payoff. Like, that all felt really earned. It was just the way that the scenes were edited together and structured that sort of rubbed me the wrong way just a bit. And I guess I wasn't too keen on the scenes between Petra, the maid, and Frid, the groom. I just found it kind of creepy the way that he was coddling her and speaking to her. In this movie, her character is 18, and 
he looks like he's past 40, so it was just kind of an odd relationship. It did feel very Bergman to me, though, as they were sort of the narrators or innocent observers of the events taking place over this summer night. There was an almost astronomical quality to those characters at the end, as if they knew how everything was going to pan out all along. And that's Smiles of a Summer Night. It may not be an incredibly personal film for Bergman, although I wouldn't know. I'm not the man. I am not Ingmar Bergman. Have to make that clear. I can't speak for him in those terms, but I do know that it was definitely a very important film for his career as it achieved major success at the 1956 Cannes Film Festival, which then allowed Svenk's film industry to give him the green light to make his next film, the film he was dying to make, The Seventh Seal. And of course, as we know, the rest is history. But I loved Smiles of a Summer Night way more than I thought I would. I was so pleasantly surprised and just floored by my enjoyment and engagement in this film and for all of the other reasons given in this video, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five stars. So now that I'm through with Smiles of a Summer Night and I have officially started my journey and exploration into Ingmar Bergman cinema, I cannot wait to continue this exploration and just keep learning more about the filmmaker and the very influential films that he made in his amazing career. If you enjoyed this video, as I very carefully put the box down without breaking it or putting it into a dirty spot of the floor. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this because this structure is a little bit different from what I normally make. I just felt compelled to do this for some reason and uh, I think I'm proud of this video. I'm very excited to get this out. At this point, it's already out because you're watching it. I'm going off on a weird tangent. But if you enjoyed this video, stick around for more. Let me know what you thought. You know, all of your feedback is wonderful. It lets me know what I should do next with the channel. And that's all I have for you. Thank you all for sticking with me and watching. And I will talk to you later.